And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock. We have Heather Lewis in talking about the Liberty Dollar. I've been holding back on this for a long time, just letting it play out because I, you know, I was supportive of anybody educating anybody on the value and the usefulness and the mechanism, the role silver plays in our economy. And had, heck, in most languages, the word money is silver. <laughs> I mean, they're synonymous. The translation of the word money is also used for silver. And there's a reason. The reason is because silver has been a store of value in honest transactions between individuals for millennia, along with gold. Now, this so the education process of this was not lost on me. I understood that. The implementation and the direct, I, you know, put my chest out and I wish to go head to head with the Federal Reserve. I want to go because because you, you know someone just as much, if not more so, more than who their friends are or who their enemies are. So I understand that completely. Well, Bernard wanted to make sure that everybody knew who his enemy was. Well... They got the courts and shiny badges and, you know, and uniforms and always available uh, gun. So here we go. Now convicted. Now he did their system, their way, their sports casters, their ball, their rules, their playing field, and, you know, thought there was going to be some other outcome. So we've learned from the Liberty Dollar and other people doing the same kinds of thing, trying to reintroduce gold and silver into our economy and as barter and exchange with people. They've learned from his mistake or was it planned is he i think he's going to win on appeal or he should is he blame the system so i i we do want to get to the point of where i left in the, the last i know heather wants to you know jump in on this is that <laughs> when someone gets I, they come to my pizza restaurant and they would this is what i was instructed whatever it is i can give up the, the ten dollar face value on that as change and that puts it into the system well, I go or use the Liberty dollars. And so I'm going, let me tell you the first thing that's going to happen. They go to a bank and try and deposit that, even though, you know, now that $10 that it had on it that you paid maybe five back in the day for that, back in early 2000s, and silver has just gone stupid. And we knew that would happen. It's now worth 36. You know, well, uh, they come out ahead, but they can't deposit it in the bank. And I'll guarantee you, federal prosecutors brought that scenario up, did they not? Yeah, it did come up, because obviously that is an issue. And like I was saying before, though, a lot of testimony was given as to the training that was received by the RCOs that they were to pass on to the associates about making sure, making very clear that people understood that it wasn't Liberty Dollar, because that's the theory behind community currency is that it stays in the community, that it doesn't get banked, that it stays there and it goes around in the community and it bolsters the economy at a local level. Now, how it started, and this is, this is a little fishy to me, because Agent Andy, Andrew Romagnolo, who was the head FBI agent who headed up the uh, investigation, testified that in 2004, when they started their investigation, exactly what you were saying happened. A merchant came in to the FBI. Well, the bank from the merchant is who called the FBI because she attempted to deposit one of the silver medallions, and it is not legal tender, so you cannot put it into the bank. They called the FBI. Now, that merchant never testified. Neither did the bank that they claim started this investigation off. Instead, what happened was they put on the stand another merchant who claimed that in 2003, Kevin Innes, who was the regional currency officer for North Carolina, had come into her pizzeria on multiple occasions and used the $10 Liberty dollar to buy pizzas. She testified that he told her she could put it in the bank. Now, instead of putting that one in the bank, 
she put that into her son's piggy bank because she recognized it as something that could be saved, something that in the future might have a greater value. So she put it in her son's piggy bank. Then she claims he came in and bought another pizza, and she put that one into her grandson's piggy bank. Then they came in and bought another pizza, and she had another one. And by the fourth one that she received, the other one went out to one of her um, one of her workers. By the time she got the fourth one, is when she attempted to bank it, and it came back as undepositable. The bank sent it back to her, and she put it. She claimed she put it into her son's piggy bank because it was worthless. It was absolutely worthless. So she just put it in his piggy bank and left it there. And that was in two thousand and three. In 2009, she saw the pictures of Kevin Innes. This is after they had arrested him. She saw the photo of him on TV, dug it out six years later, dug it out of her son's piggy bank and took it to the FBI. And that was the only witness from the community that was ever put on the stand as having been confused by the Liberty Dollar. And they only needed one. Well, you know what? There, I've done some research on this myself. I have been able, not been able, to find anyone in the 10 million of these silver rounds that were in circulation. We have found no one with a similar complaint. They they only needed one. You know, so I I, I want to bring this up so you understand my perspective. Being you know in business for a long time and so on, there's a there's a lesson that you learn in management classes and such, and it goes like this: Whenever you fire an employee, you know you have to you fire him. A lot of people they think you're know, like assistant managers and so on. They go, oh, he did this and this and this. They had all this long list of things and people and said and did. Well, then. The other side will come in, well, you you know, he had his hair too long. Well, this guy over here's hair is too long. You didn't fire him. This guy came in late. You didn't fire him. Whenever you have a bunch of reasons why that you're going after someone, if you didn't consistently apply that, well, then they can, you know, shoot down all your reasons. All you need is one, one good reason. He he stole something. He yelled at a customer. What? Boom, done, gone. And that's what they do. They don't need to bring in anybody else. They need one good reason incontrovertible example, and you're done. And that's all they needed. That's all they did. And it was successful. So my thing is now we've gone through that. We have, but the original intent for this whole thing was to educate people about silver. I think it did that. I think a lot of people learned a lot of things. But the thing is now, Bernard is in what situation? He, I'm sure there's going to be appeals and so on, but what is his possible sentence? What is he looking at? 25 years in a federal penitentiary, which is a life sentence for a 67-year-old man for trying to educate the American public. And for I, in, in my own personal opinion, do not believe that he broke the law. I mean, that is my own personal opinion. I've sat through the trial. I watched it, and this is criminal we're talking about. Again, it comes to beyond a reasonable doubt, and the intention and the intention, I do not believe, of Liberty Dollar was to pass counterfeit money, to claim that this was legal tender that could be put into the bank. That is not the intention. The intention was to get it into the community with the understanding that it couldn't be put in the bank. It's competition for the Federal Reserve. And they're not the first company that's ever tried to compete with the United States government. Federal Express went through exactly the same issue when they tried to compete with the United States Post Office, and they had legal problems with the U.S. government. They won in the end. And so hopefully on appeal, he'll have an opportunity for them to actually look at the law that was applied because it was not applied properly. Okay, when we come, obviously- when we come back, that's the one thing that we're going to look at is what are going to be the issues on appeal. And, you know, and do we have other alternatives that were inspired by Liberty Dollar? Anyway, in place. I'm sure well, we do. But the thing is, is that we need to know what's going to be his defense going forward and how he's doing. Heather Lewis covered it beginning to end. We'll be right back.